Hey, what's up everybody? We're back in the shop. I'm doing a bunch of catching up. I tell you what, I'm gonna go through everything that I'm doing. It's a bunch of tips and tricks that you need to know for speed running and just for general RCs. Um, mostly are these BSR foam tires I gotta catch up on. We are going to balance all these and true them, go through all of them and figure out which ones are good. This box I got from my buddy who speed runs. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and balance and true those for them. Then I got a stack of pinks, a stack of purples of my own to go through. Also the ones on the car. Uh, we're going to go ahead and gear up my limit list to hit 160. Because I guarantee you guys I'm going to hit 160 this next run. I feel it in my soul. So I'll show you guys which thread locker and how I do the pinion gears and spur gears. If you guys watch the channel you know this is the mustard sauce. Um, we got QS8 connectors. These are a little bit more trickier than a regular battery connector to solder. So we're going to go ahead and solder these QS8 connectors onto some just regular batteries that I'm going to be using. Uh, not speedrun batteries. My speedrun batteries are over here. I use SMC SRD packs and then also these regular ones to warm up usually. So we'll go ahead and solder new connectors on. Here is my tire balancer. Um, here is the putty I use to balance the tires. I will show you all that. And also, I will show you this tire truer. It's from Japan. It's the cheapest one that you could find. Kevin Talbot uses the same one. And just like him, I had to modify this to be able to fit these BSR foam tires. So I'll go over everything in this video. And I will get caught up on all this crap, I tell you what. We'll go ahead and start off with balancing the tires. I'll let you in on a little secret. If you don't want to buy a tire balancer, don't. All you have to do is come to uh, your speed run vehicle, is usually what I use. Take out your rear drive shaft, and then your hex will be free spinning. And then as long as your bearings are all good, then you can just use your rear hub to balance your tire. Uh, the basic principle of balancing a tire is wherever the heaviest part of the tire is, it'll float to the bottom. And then you just take a little bit of your balancing clay and you put it up here on the opposite side where the heaviest part is. And you keep adding clay until it wants to kind of free spin by itself. And there's not really a certain point where it wants to stop on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and clean up these tires with rubbing alcohol so the balancing clay can stick to it well and it doesn't want to fall off and I'll show you guys how I work this balancer. barely touch it and it should free spin if it's perfectly balanced so right there it's pretty close it doesn't want to stop at a certain part okay we got all the tires balanced double check the old ones are balanced and we got them all situated so we're ready to get into the tire lathe so I'm gonna go ahead and do my sets first um, he wants these down to a hundred millimeters exactly so I'm going to go ahead and tune this into 100 millimeters on mine and then we could get his absolutely perfect. When it was stock, you were able to do it with this number, but uh, this is made for 10th scale vehicles and smaller. So as you can see here, this line right here is actually where this back plate used to be. I had to unscrew it 
I had to drill my own new holes in the bottom and put it back to where it could fit these bigger BSR foam tires. Also, one more thing is, since it's made for the 10th scale vehicles, this is a 12 millimeter hex. Uh, you need the 17 millimeter hex. All of that you need is this little sleeve that goes over the 12 mirror. It's a 17 millimeter adapter. I couldn't find just the adapter, so I ended up buying this whole new assembly. Also, one more thing with this thing, uh, you're not gonna be able to read the instructions unless you speak Japanese. Everything is in Japanese, even the, it comes from Japan Post. There you go. Even has my name in Japan. Sean, Jackie Chan is how you say it in Japan. Um, another weird thing about this one is the power source. It just has a 12 volt uh, black and red uh, little doohickey. I don't even know what you call these things. So basically how I run it is I got my Venom charger here with two alligator clips, a red and black, and I just alligator clip these to those, and then that's how I power this thing. Uh, I'm not sure a better way to power it, but that's how I do it. Also, it comes with uh, this little plastic thing, so you don't get stuff everywhere. Uh, that I cannot use with these bigger tires, so I just gotta put it inside a box and hopefully don't make too much of a mess. So let's get to it. Just look at that precision work, guys. That's just quality machining right there. They're all 100 millimeter exactly. The edges are sanded down and they're ready to go balance. My buddy's gonna break his PB for sure this summer. He's one mile an hour slower than me at 153. So we're definitely both breaking PBs this summer. There's gonna be jelly parties going everywhere. Okay, we'll solder up some QS8 connectors and also I'll go over some bullet connectors. I run QS8 connectors on all my batteries, even my little 3S batteries for my Arma Sentin. It just makes it super easy to have everything the same connector. I just go over to my charger and I don't even have to switch anything out. It's just always the same connector hooked up. I just throw it on there, charge it. And then I can run 8S or 6S or anything in any of my trucks and it just makes it super simple. So let's get to it. Okay, the main trick to soldering QS8 connectors is having a lot of heat very fast. You want to solder these and get it over with very fast or else you'll melt the housing around it and you'll ruin the connector. So I got a few soldering stations. I got this little one. Definitely doesn't get the job done. Uh, it's good for like my mini crawlers and everything. Got this Amazon one. Uh, the statistics on it all say that it should be good enough for a QS8 connector, but it's not. 
Um, I got this $20 Weller from Home Depot. This was the first one I ever bought, the cheapest one I ever bought. And this thing gets super hot, guys. This thing is my workhorse. I've been using it for everything. You want some uh, wire strippers? Uh, I got some flux on standby, but as you can see, mine's unopened because I'm too badass. I don't need it. Uh, you know, you got the straw for Kool-Aid when you get thirsty. You know, you just suck up the Kool-Aid and drink it. You're all good to go. Uh, you want a wet sponge to clean your tips, smaller tips for smaller applications, and of course, all your solder. So I'll go ahead and get to it. You don't want to cut both wires at once. Because I heard if both wires touch the bare ends, then you're going to short out your battery. Or it's just going to explode like a bomb. Who knows? I haven't done it, so uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm not sure which color you're supposed to start with. I usually just start with black. So we'll go ahead and chop the black one first. Guys, QS8 connectors could be tough at first. Um, if you screw one or two up, you know, don't get discouraged. Keep trying. You know, uh, the first time I ever soldered a QS8 connector, I'm pretty sure I ruined three or four of these before I even got one correct. Even making this video, I screwed one up. I got a little bit too hot, and then the outside glue that holds in the connector starts melting out, and then you can't get the end cap on flush. So that's what happens when you heat it up too much. So even me who's done plenty of connectors, I still screw them up every now and then. So just take your time, be careful. It takes a little bit of practice. You might ruin a couple, but don't give up. And you got it, you can do it. the limitless last year I hit 154 on a 54 37 combo 54 pinion 37 spur um, I'm trying to use smaller gears so it's less mass to be turning last year I just went for the biggest gear possible and now I'm starting to learn you know less mass less weight is always better so we're gonna stick with the 50 it's a little bit smaller and then we're just gonna throw in this 30T spur on replaces 40T. You guys are probably wondering why I call it the mustard sauce all the time. I mean, it's not even yellow. Why don't I call it the ketchup sauce? I tell you what, guys, 
because mustard has vinegar and this channel is full of piss and vinegar. So this thread locker is great to use for the pinions because it doesn't come loose and the spurs. But the only downside is you got to use some heat to get it loose. But I mean, as long as you heat it up enough, I've never had a problem getting it off, guys. See, now it comes undone nice and easy. And once you get them out, before you reuse them, you always want to clean them off. Clean off the old glue so then the new glue has something to stick to. While I'm in here on the spur, especially because I haven't been in here since last year, I usually clean up all the grease, get everything all clean. So then once you put new glue, everything works good. We'll go ahead and clean these bearings off and we'll put some new bearing oil on it. So one thing about the pointed grub screws is, um, the point starts wearing down and then that metal to metal connection starts wearing down, especially on the flat part of the shafts. So especially on that flat part, you want to make sure you get a flat grub screw flat to the part of the shaft. And I always dry fit, fit the screws first. Um, I at least dry fit the uh, flat one to the flat shaft. So then you know it's on there where it's supposed to be. Then we'll go ahead and we'll take this second one and we'll get the mustard sauce ready. You want to shake this stuff up, get it all mixed up. Then you want to put a few, couple drops on there. Just one on each side. So we got the first one done. Now we can go back to the first one, the flat one on the flat shaft. Get that out. We'll give it another good clean. Make sure there's nothing on there. Get a couple good drops. Wipe off the excess. Got a nice even coat. And go ahead and slam it in there. Nice and deep like. Wipe off the excess. And then you want to make sure that you dry for 24 hours. And I guarantee this will never come undone. If you follow these instructions, flat grub screws, clean screws, and dry for 24 hours with red 271 mustard sauce. You guys know what's up. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope there was some good information in it, and I hope it helped some of you guys out with something. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start figuring out what's wrong with my speedrun car. Last time I was out, I blew the front differential. So I'm probably gonna open it up and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, order the diff housings that I want with the bigger input bearings. So I quit blowing my input bearings. And then I'll go ahead and order new differential gears for the front and back. Just replace everything and we should be able to hit 160 no problem uh, if you guys are a new watcher hit that subscribe button and make sure you click that bell so you don't miss any new videos thanks for watching